Hi, I'm Russ Segner. We put this series together to feature narrow gauge layouts, seldom seen because they are not located in cities where we normally visit for national narrow gauge conventions. Thanks to the organizing committee of Jerry Cornwell, Pete Smith, Mark Lachey, Dave Adams, and Jeff Schultz. Information in this program is available at NNG at groups Dot io. We hope you will join us. So now for our program. All right, Rick, are you ready? Sure, let's do it. What we want to accomplish today, Maureen is here. She's over there, see. Uh, what we want to accomplish tonight is uh, some basic techniques and methods that we use to produce our, uh, to, to make our kits actually. Um, one of the things, and Russ likes this story, you gotta have a good work. Uh, we usually have, like what we have here is a three quarter inch uh, Melmine shelf, but it's, it's, it's good and heavy. The reason I'm saying that is because one time we had a, a build a, a big howl bridge on a table that was warped. And, and the end result was a nice big bridge that had a sway back in it. Anyways, it didn't ever find a place on anybody's layout. So Maureen's going to take you through a couple tools here and I'll just show you exactly what we do. Just some of the stuff that I um, always have on my bench when I'm putting a kit together that um, maybe might help you if um, you haven't tried it before. Um, one thing is, and I think you're going to find out more about this in the next session, is the automation sander. It's fantastic. And I use it a lot just um, just to give you that very accurate angle that you need. So Al Collins, I know, is going to run through that with you. So I won't spend a lot of time on it other than to say that I love it. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> um, the other thing is just the kind of glue I use is tight bond. Um, like anything that's um, Really, uh, any wood glue is, is great. I think LePage's or Elmer's, and I know that a lot of people like Aileen's. I haven't tried that yet, but um, someday I will. Tight bond is great though. Sets up um, fairly quick and you can play with it a little bit. And I have this little applicator bottle that I use. Um, I, somebody gave me a, a package of them. You can find them on Amazon though, just uh, empty glue bottles. And they have little nibs that come with them various gauges. So they work really well um, just for being precise with your glue and not um, putting too much on. Works great. And then I have a little tweezer that I use all the time when I'm um, taking the glue off of a joint, when I'm gluing two pieces together. If I've got a little bit of glue oozing out, I just take the tweezers and, and wipe it off and just rub it on the paper or on my skin, actually. And you notice with the tweezers that they're, they are bent mm -hmm. and they are so much easier to handle and so much easier to see what you're doing. One of the big things about uh, tweezers is the, the points have to be really good and they have to come together. Like a <laughs> lot of tweezers that, that right at the uh, tip, it starts to flare out. That's bad. <laughs> Maybe while we're talking about the tweezers, I'll show you um, uh, a lot of our kits have a lot of uh, nut bolt washer castings that you have to uh, apply. And um, I know that sometimes um, people lose a lot of them and they go shooting across the room. I'll just show you the little technique that I follow to do this. So I've got, I'm using O scale, so I'm kind of cheating here. They're nice and big. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see them. So first of all, use, use, uh, white background. Okay, I've got my drawing that's uh, taped to the board and then I put wax paper over top. So you can do it right on there. Take a nice sharp X-Acto knife. And what I do is I just put my finger on the X-Acto knife like that and hold it over top of the NBW. Leave a really good tail on it. These are titchy um, NBWs. You can cut, you know, maybe one or two at a time. People try and cut the whole spew at one time. It doesn't work that way. That's why you lose them. So just make sure your fingers placed over the end of the exacto knife. Leave a good tail. I think you can see that. Yep. 
And then you take a, a pin vise with a drill drill bit in the size of your, your uh, NBW. And we do every fourth tie when we're putting our NBWs on. So this is the stringer that I had put together for you a, a few weeks ago. And I've just painted or stained the um, guardrails a really light gray so you can see. So just take your vise and your drill bit and just pile it a hole. You can use a push pin. I know Rick likes to use a push pin, but I don't. I like to use the drill. Just give it a little hole. Somebody might ask, why don't you use a Dremel? A Dremel is very uncontrollable. For little stuff like this, it's, it's just not suitable. So I'll do a couple of holes here. Okay, so then that's where these tweezers really come in handy. They're very, very pointy, very sharp, and they've got that nice angle. So what I do, I have to get a little pot of glue here. So I just use the tight bond, put a little bit of glue on, on the wax paper here. Like my hole is plugged up here. Okay. There we go. So take that MBW and grab it just under the head. I don't know if you can see that. So I've got it. Um, right under the head, and then take the tail, pop it in the glue, just put a little bit of glue on there, and pop it in the hole. Just give it a little shove in, and you can wipe any excess glue off around it. Okay. Wipe the glue off the tweezers and grab the next one, just under the head. Pop it in the glue. And in the next hole. I usually say after you've done 10, you're an expert. Uh, the, the, the whole secret is not to lose them. <laughs> one, two, three, four. So I'll put another one in for you. Now I know Maureen's done a few thousand. Certainly O scale's a little easier than. We actually have MBWs right down to our N scale kits. There you go, whoops. I think you can see those on there. And then what I would do when I'm all finished and they've dried up a little bit. I would take um, some of our creosote black uh, weathering mix here. I use that a lot for uh, washes. And I'll put a little, what I would do is go along that whole guardrail and it will just highlight those nut boat washer castings. So I would just go along that guardrail, put a wash on. And I don't know that you can see it here, but you would be able to see the uh, little rings on the top of the NBWs will, will be coated in that. Uh, you can actually tell brush. that it's, it's a, a hex nut. I don't yeah. know if you can bring it up to close to the I camera. I don't know if that'll focus in, maybe. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Anyway, I think it looks, looks great. Now, if you're, you're doing N scale and you don't want to put those little, uh, Nut bolt washer casting, then just a little tip. I found this pen at Michael's actually. It's a Kuretake Zig Memory System um, Millennium pen. It's used for scrapbooking and it's a rust color. It's called Pure Brown, uh, the number is 05. And it is great. You can just take that little pen. I think mine's dried up now though, but uh, on the end scale, you can just put a little dot. No, oh, it's still still working. So it comes out rust colored. It doesn't bleed. Um, it's it's great. It works great. And with this one, with this little pen, if if you get real creative, you can do the dot and then 
uh, slide it off a little bit and it'll actually do a little bit of a tail, a rusty tail on it. The only thing is when you go to Michael's to buy that pen, you have to buy a pack of about five different colors. I, I think it was about $20, yeah. I think, but um, it's worth its weight in gold too. <laughs> uh, so that's the NBWs. Um, the other thing I was going to show you is uh, a lot of our kits like this how. Well, our security system just went off. <laughs> This how um, has uh, all the metal rods in here. They're phosphorus bronze, and they are a brass color. If I can pick them up here, you can see that. That's how shiny they are. So if you've got a lot of these rods to put into your bridges, the thing that I have found, I used to paint them a rust color <laughs> and then uh, wash them with a, the creosote black wash. And boy, that was very time consuming. So what I have found, and I'm sure you fellas know this, but is this bottle is well used, but it's um, micro engineering rail weathering solution. It's fantastic, actually. It, this is well used and reused. But you just pour a little bit in a container and stick your rods in there and let them sit in oh maybe five minutes or so and that will etch them and they'll turn a nice black i'll just leave it sit in there for a little bit and uh, you just rinse them off with water to stop the etching process um, but they work great i'll take them out in a few minutes and then when you're going to put your rods in all these how bridges show show the angle block on the yeah, bridge yeah okay uh, you can see here let me see okay see this little angle block here all those angle blocks go on the cords and then you drill a hole through the angle block to put the rods in to join the upper and the lower cords so I'll just give you a couple of tips as to uh, what might that make that a little bit easier. We've had a lot of our customers come back and say, how do you drill the hole when the part is on a peak? How do you get the drill bit into the peak? Well, this is a little method that we've developed. It's, it's really simple. What I do is I, I take a, just a file and um, right where you're supposed to place it, you just file that off at the top. And that'll allow you to take that peak off and you'll be able to get your drill bit right in that spot. So there is your target for your drill bit. Okay, so then I've got all our kits have the appropriate drill bit in there. That's one of the things we decided when we were making kits, if it has a rod in it and you need a drill bit, uh, most modelers only have, um, Lost my drill bit. all the good ones are, are, are broken. Uh, so we actually give you the, the drill bit that is about two or three thousandths of an inch bigger than what the rod is. So you get a nice tight fit. My drill bit wasn't in there tight enough. <laughs> so anyway, you just drill that through, make sure it's right through should be, be go going between the space of the cords. And then I'll just show you this little uh, rod that I'm etching so you can see the big difference there, maybe. Get rid of some of that stuff there. So there's the black black one that's etched, and just the brass one. And what I usually do, I'm I'm not going to touch that one that I just etched because it's all black. But just take your file and just take the burr off the uh, ends of the rods. So it'll go into the hole a little bit easier. And then you just pop your wires in the holes like that. 
can see that. There you go. Important that you really, of course, drill that hole uh, nice and vertical so they're not leaning. So that's that's the rods. Anything else that you can think about the rods, Rick, or I, the I, NBWs? I don't think so. No. On uh, some of our kits, the uh, um, actually the rod goes on the outside. And that's okay. We we uh, because they don't have any base to go into. We actually glue them. You can see, you can see right here. It goes on the outside. It's got five rods, okay. And the fifth rod actually goes on the outside and on the inside. The other ones are three rods, and they actually go into the angle block. Mm -hmm. And you can see how many inbounds are on that one, mm -hmm. and different sizes too. The, uh, these ones here are to join the whole uh, cord assembly together. And then that one right there is actually lines up with the rod that actually goes across, the truss rod that goes uh, horizontal on it. You see on the bottom there, yeah, there's the rods going. Across. I might add that one of the things we decided with our, our kits is that the cords are actually spaced. Uh, uh, some of them have four or 500 little tiny spacers and those spacers actually line up with all the NBWs and line up with all the rods. Uh, in years gone by, like the Campbell kits for an example, had solid wood that was etched to be looking like that, but ours are actually, you can actually see through them. How true. Oops. There's our how through. Uh, we can see all the ink block and the rods. And if you look at the, the plates on the tops and bottoms, um, nobody made them. Uh, so we went to Tishy himself and said to Don, you know, we want our bulk plates, our, our plates there to be in line with our cords so that each one is in line with the, the space going through each one of the cords. So he made them up for us. And um, like what you see right there is one spew. So one spew has um, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, eight of the uh, three bolt and four of the five bolt. So one spew does like the top. Now you're looking at how many hours to do this one? For, for me, probably about 40, I would say. So there you go. If you have uh, 40 hours to put aside, then fine. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> one of the things we've done, uh, we've done a lot of make and take clinics and uh, we do make and takes on our trestles and they always get, get asked for we want to do it on the curve. And while they have our expertise there to do it on a curve, uh, so this is our, just our regular trestle um, and you can make it to any radius you want. Um, the, the whole secret behind, uh, the, the, the few basic rules you need to know is the bent needs to be perpendicular to the track and the, uh, Stringers, which are the under part here, See there. those parts, okay, they actually are in little tangents. That's what makes the circle. So each one of those is cut into a little tangent, and then the joint for those are exactly above the bent. See that from here. And then everything else is as cosmetic. Like, like they didn't take a tree and bend it. To go around and I've seen a lot of guys take the strip wood and just bend it around. Um, so okay if you think about it the one on the outside of the curve will be the longest and then a little shorter and then a little shorter and then a little shorter and a little shorter and a little shorter. So there's actually six different sizes of uh, stringers there. Um, when you're we developed a whole method of how to do this uh, through our clinics because nobody's really ever documented how to do the curve. 
Um, it was fine back in the days when, uh, 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 in the flex track, when it was uh, an HO was 18 and 22. But um, every trestle has got its own length and its own curve, even if it's transition curves. So this is what our uh, curve instructions look like. They come with every one of our trestle kits. And it's pretty full, foolproof of how to get to the end. This is what our instructions look like for all our kits. And you can see we just got a nice brand new printer and the colors are coming out really good. <laughs> You can see there that uh, all the little uh, on the stringers are getting on uh, tangents. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's really anything else. The, the other tool that I use a lot is just a, a, a razor saw. I use a fine tooth razor saw. This one's 42 teeth to the inch and I use that a lot for distressing all my wood and and that's how I cut all my lumber on the on the uh, drawings as well. Um, just a handy little tool. Everybody says why don't you use a chopper? Uh, a chopper might have its place but um, when you chop the wood it actually uh, crushes the end fibers of the wood. Um, in some cases that might look good but a majority of cases it's it's not a, a good thing to look at. Um, lumber, uh, we use only basswood uh, from Jerry, from Mount Albert Scale Lumber and Al Collins. And we are one of the few in that, uh, in our trestles and our piers, we're one of the few that have actually round basswood. Uh, we found out that if you go to Michael's and get maple or birch or something like that, it doesn't distress the same, it doesn't stain the same, and it doesn't glue the stain. So we decided we'd always put basswood round stock in. And it, it, it adds a lot to it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our uh, snow shed. Yeah. No, no. Uh, no, not our snow shed, our, our <laughs> covered bridge. Um, one of the things we want to do in the future is do a, 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 like a half hour clinic on how to do our shakes. Our shakes are actually basswood. And uh, they're laser cut by, uh, uh, imagine that laser art, just a few miles from here, from good friends of ours. And that's the only laser part we have. And the method of doing that is absolutely different than a regular structure because a regular structure, you distress the wood, then you stain your base coat, and then you do your cutting and your gluing. And then with this, you don't. You put the raw wood on top. Uh, without staining or anything because the glue uh, as soon as you put the glue to it it wants to warp a little bit and uh, you don't want that so it, it's a different method we, we stain all that later so is that about it for this time yeah anybody has any questions okay russ back to you well thank you very much to rick and maureen it's uh, all of us who built a lot of stuff still learn stuff and that's yeah like like we've we've really found fun. that uh, no matter how seasoned you are there's always a little tidbit that you can pick up here and there if you notice on the on the uh, drawing there there's still she cut off three of them or six of them and she used them and now she's still got three left <laughs> hey rick it's mark one quick question what is your website oh i see somebody's posted it so it's just hunterline.com it's that easy, yes. We hope you enjoyed this. We look forward to seeing you again. The next session will be posted on the group's IO NNG several days before the next program. Look for the link there.